Cultural life in the Netherlands is rich, as visitors from abroad often experience. But in 2011, the Dutch government cut proportionately more from the culture sector's budget than from those of other policy sectors. Its austerity plan sparked fierce protest, reaching their climax in a protest march, the March of Civilization. The speed and size of the budget cuts and the tone of the debate make the Dutch situation unique. But austerity is on the agenda in other countries too. In the background, a more fundamental question is being raised. These and other more fundamental questions have led the Netherlands Scientific Council for Government Policy, the WRR, to consider the future of Dutch cultural policy. The result is the report Revaluing Culture, presented to the Minister of Education, Culture and Science, Jet Busemaker, on 5th March 2015. She's embraced the Council's key recommendations in her cultural policy plans for the 2017 to 2020 period. The cultural field is affected by socio-cultural, economic and political administrative developments. The socio-cultural emancipation of citizens has changed their tastes and their participation in cultural activities. We see a great diversity in the perception of culture and there are culturally active people and culturally less enterprising people. Economically speaking, culture is increasingly considered to be a source of positive economic dynamics. For instance, according to the European Commission, the cultural sector provides economic growth and employment. Significant changes in the political administrative context are the privatization of institutions and organizations. More focus on entrepreneurship and greater emphasis on performance and accountability. These three developments affect the objectives of cultural policy and how we look at culture. These aims are intertwined with three dominant views on culture, an artistic perspective, a social perspective and an economic perspective. We notice that the number of policy aims within each of these perspectives has increased in recent decades. This is partly done to reinforce support for cultural policy and for the cultural sector. Increasingly, the emphasis has moved to identifying the impact and value of culture and to the relations between culture and other policy domains. In short, the aims have become broader and more extensive. But the WRR research indicates that it is not so easy to demonstrate the value of culture or its effects on society and economy in a clear-cut scientific way. Often, it's not feasible to determine how cultural expressions and their desired effects are interrelated. It is impossible or very difficult to isolate and examine them. But there are other reasons why it is important to be cautious when steering for external effects. Chances are that different means deliver the same or even better results. For instance, what to do when a new football stadium has a much larger effect on employment and spending than a new opera house. Furthermore, there's a risk of overburdening the cultural sector by ever-increasing expectations. If the sector continuously gets new aims imposed upon it and it cannot live up to the corresponding expectations, then this will lead to loss of legitimacy instead of the much-needed support for cultural policy. For this reason, the WRR pleads for a revaluation of the cultural in cultural policy. The subsidized sector should not be at the service of other policy areas but should instead receive independent consideration, primarily focused on substantive developments within the cultural sector itself. We came up with six suggestions that will help the cultural sector move forward and to which the government may contribute with its cultural policy. Creativity is the new fuel of the 21st century. We have heard this claim more frequently in recent years. However, only a relatively small number of graduates find work that matches their education. So, first of all, it is important to limit the intake of students for certain creative arts programs. Furthermore, within the framework of the programs, even more attention may be given to the competencies needed for a creative career, within or outside the cultural sector. With the distinction between the so-called high and low culture being blurred, it is no longer obvious that the government or experts determine what does and what does not have quality. Expert judgments may be supplemented with public judgments, as, for instance, happened with the awarding of literary prizes. 
and it would also be a good idea to experiment with letting citizens vote on how a certain percentage of the cultural budget should be spent. However, cultural policy is more than just government funding policy. Often, it is sufficient to create conditions for cultural facilities that are established bottom-up, for example, through the market. The government can tailor its actions accordingly. Small-scale facilities aimed at a small audience require different interventions than large-scale and commercial initiatives. Audiences are less faithful to genres, institutions and events. At the same time, audiences have become more important as a source of revenue for the government-funded cultural sector. In addition to reaching larger audiences, cultural institutions should also pay attention to the quality of the contact with their audiences and to developing new audiences. And this calls for the development of new research methods to properly map the ever capricious behaviour of citizens. The government may ensure that this research and development function of the cultural sector will receive more attention and will receive a portion of the public funding for this purpose. In order to complete this task, there is also a need for a better developed investment climate. In addition to government grants, self-generated income and donations, more creative funding methods may be possible, such as attracting investments. The WRR recommends to explore and encourage the use of different funding opportunities. Finally, the WRR warns against unwanted Matthew effects. The effect that unequal starting positions will lead to ever-increasing differences in the funding of artists and cultural institutions. Certain new funding methods, for instance crowdfunding, work to the benefit of artists and cultural institutions with wealthy people in their social networks. Moreover, not every cultural institution finds itself in an equally good position to increase its revenues, for instance, for reasons of location. This has consequences for the cultural offerings. We therefore recommend to carefully monitor the effects of new financial methods and the earning capacity of government-funded cultural institutions. All these six proposals of WRR aim to ensure the quality, diversity and breadth of cultural offerings for the longer term as well. Only a cultural sector that is capable of continuous development and innovation can be of lasting value to Dutch society. For a more detailed analysis, please download the essay Revaluing Culture from the website www.wrr.nl. en. There you can also download the Dutch report, including contributions by experts from the Netherlands and abroad.